Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the Texas legislature will be back in Austin today for a third special session. Up next, the top item on Governor Abbott's agenda. Israel's prime minister warning of a long and difficult war ahead after Palestinian militants attacked the nation over the weekend, leaving hundreds dead. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with more on the U.S. response. Back here at home, 61 degrees, beautiful weekend. We will see some rain maybe later this week and another cool front by the end of the week. Mike will explain all of this in just a minute. It's just nice that fi fall has finally arrived. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is October 9th. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. It is Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Day. And I know a lot of people have the day off. A lot, of, a lot of kiddos are off today. That's right. And they're enjoying absolutely lovely weather out there. Nice and crisp again this morning. 61 is crisp for us. Oh, yes, indeed. We got down into the upper 50s yesterday. And yeah, the weekend just couldn't have been better. It stayed in the upper 70s both days. Just since I think folks are still giddy about all the beautiful weather that we uh, we had around here. So here's what it looks like as far as temperatures right now. We are at uh, 62 degrees. Look at that bottom number dew point is at 50 which yeah is just fantastic we do have a couple of clouds out there so uh, we will drop down a few more degrees but not as cool as what we could get because a little bit of a blanket is uh, hanging on in 83 for a high temperature today so once again we will still be below normal even though we get up into the low 80s the aquifer went up six tenths of a foot and the allergens do have a whole lot of mold out there from some of the rain that we had last week ragweed is uh, on the moderate side fall elm pigweed are all low all right now we've got temperature all around the area in the 50s and 60s. Then you look at some of the uh, dew points and again, 40s, 50s, really nice dry air. Now these numbers are going to be changing over the next few days. Dew points even starting later on today will begin their, their increase. And here's some of the high clouds we're talking about right now. Those are coming in here pretty much from the Pacific Ocean. There's a tropical system here that's throwing the clouds on in here. This is then going to traverse northern Mexico and move on in. So this is going to give us a rain chance starting later in the day tomorrow into Wednesday. I know last week we were talking about some rain with that that front that was going to move on through here. Well, that's not good. Rain's going to come in earlier in the week. So first of all, today, 77 at noon, we are going to see more sunshine this morning and a couple of clouds this afternoon. Still just a sensational day. Then more clouds hanging around here tonight. We'll talk about that rain chance. That's going to be tomorrow into early Wednesday. And then big warm up going to be pushing at 90 again. We're not done with that close to it. But that front just in time for the weekend. Another picture perfect weekend. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez. Yeah, Did all good your teams morning win this weekend. Uh, no, Vikings oh. <laughs> unfortunately lost. Texas State lost. Yeah, that was not a good It was a bad, bad football weekend for me here. But uh, things looking pretty good outside in the roads right now. It was an interesting start to our morning because, uh, of course, with the holiday, people not expected to be out and about too early right now. But we will see things pick up as we move along. Taking a quick look at transit guide here is traffic moving along in the city of San Antonio. Do want to let you go know about some ongoing construction there on the southwest uh, side. This is going on there. Loop 410 westbound Somerset Road. We also had a reported crash a little bit earlier there, 35 at Somerset Road, but that has been cleared out and our traffic maps are showing that this construction no longer causing any major delays at the moment. As we take a look at the rest of our maps here, traffic looking pretty good so far. The rest of our area had a reported hazard there at 410 and I-10, but I was checking through some of the cameras and doesn't seem to be causing any major issues. As we go back outside, 281 at the quarry, things looking good there. 281 Spruce Wood, traffic moving along pretty smooth right now across the city. Mark, back to you. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is in critical condition after a shooting overnight. Happened just after midnight in the 2100 block of Thousand Oaks on the north side. According to a detective, a man was shot in a parking lot during an argument. The victim was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the neck. So far, police don't have any suspect information. However, police say they are talking with several people who witnessed the incident. Today, Texas state lawmakers will return to Austin once again for a third special session. This time it's focusing on school vouchers and the crisis at the southern border. Governor Greg Abbott has hinted for months that he would call this special session to get a law passed on school vouchers that would basically allow parents to use taxpayer dollars to help put their children through private school. 
The vouchers were one of Abbott's top priorities in the regular session. However, a plan never made it out of the House. The session agenda also revives a few proposals dealing with migrants at the border. That includes increasing penalties for human smuggling and creating a state criminal offense for illegal entry from a different country. The third special session starts this afternoon at 1 o'clock. Later tonight, Jewish leaders here in San Antonio are inviting the community to stand with Israel. They say the past 48 hours have been heartbreaking. Roughly 10,000 Jewish people live in San Antonio, and the president of the Jewish Federation of San Antonio says the new war in Israel has weighed heavily on the Jewish community. And it's, it's going to be a time for us to be able to pray together, to be able to, to pray for the loss of life that's taken place, to pray for the, the hopeful return of the hostages that were taken, um, and to pray for peace, because ultimately that's all we're really trying to achieve. That vigil will be at Temple Bethel, at, and it starts at 6 p.m. Right now, let's take a live look at Gaza City this morning, and you see smoke from what could be another missile strike this morning. Israel declared, declared war following the terrorist attack by the Palestinian militant group Hamas over the weekend. This morning, more than 700 are dead in Israel, including at least four Americans, and thousands have been injured. Meanwhile, Palestinian health officials report more than 400 killed and more than 2,000 injured as clashes continue in that region. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, President Biden is condemning the Hamas attack, promising continued military assistance for Israel. This morning, Israeli forces unleashing relentless airstrikes targeting the Gaza Strip after formally declaring war in the wake of a surprise strike from the Palestinian militant group Hamas. I don't know if you just heard that, that's the sound of a mortar coming in from Gaza. This is being fired by Hamas militants, while Israelis are trying to deal with Hamas, not just across in Gaza, but also here, still inside Israel. Israel pounding hundreds of targets in the Palestinian territory, retaliation for what's being called the worst attack on Israel in 50 years. That is intolerable for any democracy. It's uh, intolerable for Israel. Over delete altitude restriction. The U.S. mobilizing military assistance for Israel, deploying a carrier strike group to the Middle East, the Pentagon sending weapons and ammunition, and U.S. warships and fighter jets en route. The United States stands with Israel. We will not ever fail to have their back. The White House pledging continued support for Israel. <laughs> while working around the clock with Palestinian officials and leaders across the region to stem the fighting. We think it's not about all kind of issues. It's not Arabic and Israelis and Jews. It's really about humanity. Across Israel, families pleading for Hamas to release loved ones being held hostage, including young children and the elderly. Near the Gaza-Israel border, Hamas rockets targeting a music festival with many young Israelis attending. Officials reporting hundreds of bodies later recovered at the scene. In Gaza, city streets in shambles, a mosque leveled. This man says the attack scared the elderly, children and women nearby. The State Department hasn't officially connected Iran to the Hamas attack, but a senior official says the agency isn't ruling out Iran may have had some influence. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, police are investigating a shooting at a Maryland university that sent two people to the hospital. Bowie State University police say two 19-year-olds were shot at the school's Center for Business and Graduate Student Studies over the weekend. This coming just days after a shooting at Morgan State University in Baltimore sent several other people to the hospital. Both of those men are not students at the university, and the school's president says violence all uh, happened on the heels of several homecoming events on campus. Police in Bowie, Maryland have not said what led up to the shooting and no suspects have been arrested. Four weeks after going on strike, the United Auto Workers Union is still holding out for better pay and benefits from big car companies. So the union's president is calling the strike a pivotal moment for organized labor and just a small part of a war pitting working people against, quote, the billionaire class and corporate greed, end quote. The union is claiming a small victory after General Motors announced workers at new electric car factories will be under the WA 
UAW's national contract. There have been progress in talks recently, and that's signaled by no new strike targets as the new work week begins. Here at home, a reminder, we are your Eclipse Authority coming up this Saturday, October 14th, beginning at 9 a.m. We'll have coverage of the Eclipse right here on KSAT 12. You want to see more of our stories leading up to the big event, just scan the QR code on your screen right now. 10 minutes past 5, 61 degrees. People that buy an electric vehicle will soon get a new instant rebate starting next year. We'll tell you how much. And a beloved former Vermont State University professor found shot dead in a quiet rural community. Up next, a first look at the urgent investigation. 61 degrees. Oh, it's so nice saying that. What a beautiful weekend we had. And shaping up to be a nice week as well. Michael will explain as rain moves in, front moves in, all that when we come back. A murder mystery is unfolding in Vermont, where a former college dean was found dead. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, mystery in Vermont. There's always a suspect uh, in a case like this, but we just don't know who it is. Beloved former Vermont State University professor Anna Ray Fleming found shot dead in the quiet rural community of Castleton, Vermont on a rail trail Thursday. The whole community was crushed. It was a shocking, terrible, unfathomable situation for everybody. Vermont police now trying to put the pieces together. Search dogs and multiple units combing the scene. Still searching for answers, asking community members to be on alert. You know, please be vigilant, be, be safe, lock your doors, lock your cars. We're relying on the public to really help us here. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this urgent investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, New York. By 15, 61 degrees. Just ahead, how Samsung is making it even more convenient to carry your driver's license digitally. Plus, why Ring is offering $1 million if you spot an alien with your doorbell camera. Serving in Afghanistan, I was hit by sniper fire, and I was given a 5% chance to live. It's a good thing math wasn't my best subject. Today, I visit classrooms and share my story. I tell kids that with a little help and a lot of work, that you can overcome any challenge. DAV helps veterans like Adam get the benefits they've earned. They help more than a million veterans every year. My victory is being there for the next generation. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, unsystematic diarrhea. Pepto-Bismol coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. Once in a lifetime is never enough. Never enough. When I wear diamonds, I feel powerful. I feel on top of the world. Diamonds, diamonds. Diamonds for all. Pandora, love growing diamonds. 519, the Biden administration has new guidance on rebates for electric vehicles. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, cash for your electric vehicle. Starting in January, if you buy an electric vehicle, you'll get $7,500 in hand the day of the sale. That's a big change to the federal tax rebate for EVs. Buyers still have to qualify for the cash. Next, Samsung's expanding wallet. Users will be able to upload their driver's license to their Samsung wallet later this year. And Samsung says the digital ID may soon be accepted at select airports. Apple users have been able to present their digital ID in some states since last year. And finally, if you have a Ring doorbell camera, you could cash in. The company is offering a million dollars to anyone who captures an image of a real alien on their Ring cam. Submissions will be reviewed by a meteorologist and an astrobiologist. You can win $500 for the most creative fake alien caught on camera. Spotting an alien would be strange, but spotting a person you don't know? Stranger. Those are your tech bites. That was good. That was good. I like to play on words like that. So I no, love how no, they're just no. getting an official meteorologist <laughs> to, to, like, to ah, review it. Mike's like, no thanks. Like, that Not, looks like an alien. No thanks. To me. Cold fronts are wouldn't, tricky enough. I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you have maybe an alienologist or well, something? An alien. They said an astronomer. Yeah. Astronomist. Uh, astronomer. Uh, you like like X Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe they were. They're, yeah. they're called ufologists. Oh, ufologists. Seriously, I believe that's the term. There is a name. Yes, I'm you're not making this up. I, I, I'm I, not, not. I 
feel, I don't know, I can never tell. I feel like he's making this up. Th this is actually <laughs> legit this time. Yeah, yeah. So we got a few extra well winks of sleep today. Not much. The chairs are back today, so it's uh, it's back to like 10, 15 years ago. It's yeah, like here exactly. we are. Yeah. <laughs> We're back hey, in time. RJ. Yeah, hey guys, how you guys Good doing? Morning. So we are seeing some uh, lights out there, speaking of UFOs, but uh, not anything good that we want to see right now. So I-35 at Von Army there, it is out in the southwest side, the far southwest side. We have uh, some ongoing construction there that you can see is causing a pretty good backup already in this area. Again, the northbound lanes of 35 there at Von Army. So this is around the uh, Medio Creek area, a little bit around the Von Army area. You can see they have at least uh, one of those lanes blocked right there, at least that uh, far left lane. And uh, just got off the phone with TransGuy. They said this is going to be going on for pretty good while here. They expect it to go on at least for uh, the next hour or so. You can see it already causing some delays there. Again, the northbound lanes of 35 at Neighborhood Road. If you want to be a little bit more specific there, we have ongoing construction. It's causing a little bit of a, de of a delay there in that area. So if you're heading up from Von Army into the San Antonio area, just kind of keep that in mind. Rest of the city, things looking pretty good right now. Again, this was this one uh, traffic hazard that we had, but checked in with TransGuy and they said that that was ongoing construction. Some emergency repairs there at I-10, 410, but that has been cleared out and we are all good. All right, Mike, how are things looking outside? Fantastic. Pretty much an extension of the weekend that we had. Look at that sunset. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a great way to end the weekend. Yeah, I think folks are still giddy about that. And we had temperatures only in the 70s all weekend long. Low humidity. So nice to be outside. We were up in uh, Bernie for the day on Saturday. Oh, gosh, it was great. So nice start. Couple of clouds out there right now. Temperatures are below normal again, like yesterday by a degree or two. We're at 62 mid 50s in portions of the hill country. Maybe a light jacket if you are uh, getting up early. And of course, uh, some of that low humidity hanging around here. We'll still keep low humidity around throughout a good chunk of the uh, the morning hours and even in the afternoon. But it is going to start to increase a little bit as we go on into the latter part of the day. Not like we're really going to notice it, but that's the start of the, the return of the humidity, and that's then going to set the stage for uh, some showers around here tomorrow later on in the day. So dew points are going to start to stay on the higher side as we go into the middle chunk of the week. And then look at that. This looks kind of familiar, saying that's the graph that what it looked like last week with those dew points dropping off as the we go into Friday and the weekend with another front that's going to be working its way on through here. So we've got some high clouds that are hanging around right now on the satellite picture, but where we're looking is off to the southwest. There's the tropical system over here in the Pacific. This is going to make landfall and then work its way across Mexico and basically into the southern portion of the state. And so we're going to be kind of on the, the northern edge here in San Antonio as far as the uh, precipitation. So this is uh, later on this evening and or excuse me throughout the rest of the day today, I should say, and you can see the moisture which continues to build on in here. The clouds are going to be thickening up and then as we go through the day tomorrow, we start to see some of the showers around here, even a couple of thunderstorms. But again, the better chance for that rain is going to be off to the south and east. This will continue on into tomorrow night and the first portion of the day tomorrow. Then we clear on out. Just want to point out there. Look at that. I think that's the first freezing reading we've seen on this map 32 degrees at International Falls and we're on the very very sort of leading edge of that if you will so today 83 high temperature again still below normal tomorrow 75 thanks to the cloud cover around here and then we'll have some early rain on Wednesday start to clear on out I'm going to be pushing at 90 on Thursday a lot more humidity front comes through here Got another great weekend in store, so make some plans just in time for the eclipse on Saturday morning as well. More after this. A chart topping singer songwriter set to perform in an intimate show tonight for a good cause. Your CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. So You can see Olivia Rodrigo perform almost live this week. The chart-topping singer-songwriter is set to perform an intimate show tonight in Los Angeles, with ticket proceeds benefiting her new charity, Fund for Good. 
Rodrigo's performance will be filmed and made available to stream on her YouTube channel Tuesday night through Thursday. I got these cats tucking tails on four quarter sales. I'm used to seeing tears drop over enormous meals. The restaurant clears out, faint echoes of Lauren Hill. Drake is taking a break. The rapper said on Sirius XM's Table for One, he wants to focus on his health, saying he's been having the craziest problems for years with his stomach. Drake's been busy. He released two albums last year, and Friday he released his latest album, For All the Dogs, which is stuffed with 23 songs. I didn't really want to be the first black astronaut. But he was the first black astronaut to go to space. Guion, Guy, Bluford, and other black pilots, engineers, and scientists who became astronauts are profiled in The Space Race. National Geographic Documentary Films released this clip for World Space Week, which ends Tuesday. The doc is set to stream next February on Nat Geo and Disney+. Plus. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Just about 530, 62 degrees. The Saturday will be San Antonio's first ever fentanyl awareness walk up next. We hear from one of those moms who is on a mission to prevent other deaths. Plus pressure building for lawmakers in Washington fill the House Speaker seat. Just ahead, the top candidates so far and when a vote is expected. This morning, lawmakers in Washington are racing to find a new House Speaker. I really do hope that the House can come together. Up next, the two candidates find to replace former Speaker McCarthy and when a vote could happen. Trending now on KSAT.com, this morning San Antonio Jewish leaders are working to help Israel. Many Jewish San Antonians are planning a vigil to mourn those killed in Israel following the Hamas attack. It will be held tonight at Temple Bethel. You can find the time and exact location online right now. And a lot of folks are off today. Not everyone, though, but another enjoyable autumn day down in the lower 60s. We touched 50s briefly yesterday, and Mike's got some more good news especially in the rainfall department. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. It is October 9th. Good morning. So happy to be here. What a beautiful, beautiful weekend. That oh, we my had. gosh. Yeah, it was tough to commit to sports with such a beautiful weekend. <laughs> it's like you have so many things to watch inside. Right. Yeah. You want to be outside. Yeah. Or you could have just done a barbecue, had the best of both worlds. That's true. Watch a game outside. I and was also, driving around my yeah. neighborhood yesterday and mm -hmm. I saw four chairs of people with the Cowboys That's jerseys really on, mm -hmm. yeah. with the TV, sure. in their front yard, with the grill. I was like, man, this is this is <laughs> so San doing. Antonio. I love it. it. Makes sense to me. Right. So, by the way, yesterday morning even got in the upper 40s in parts of the Hill Country. So, wow. And we're in the 50s right now in parts of the, uh, the Hill Country. Also, if you're looking off to the east, and it's just now above this camera angle, but uh, there's a big uh, right there. I uh, can't even see it at the top of your screen, but if you look outside to the east, really, really bright, bright star. And that is the planet Venus, which is just behind the moon. So it's gorgeous out there. So we do have a lot of clear skies, some clouds. I saw a few of them this morning, 62 degrees right now. Dew point stands at 50. So really nice air out there. That's going to allow temperatures to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. That combined with the no wind or light wind. Mid 50s, actually low 50s Kerrville right now. You may dip down into the upper 40s in some of those outlying areas before it's all said and done. 62 at uh, Randolph and 58 over there at Rio Medina. The allergens mold is on the high side, still drying out after the beautiful rain we had late last week. Ragweeds, moderate fall elm, pigweed are all on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in a couple of hours. Mixture of sunshine and clouds today. Low 80s, a lot of sunshine this morning and then a few more clouds later on this afternoon. Then the clouds really start to thicken up overnight. And tomorrow we are going to have some rain starting to develop a couple of showers here and there in the morning, but then it's really going to start to develop later on in the day overnight and into early Wednesday that clears on out of here. We heat up though after that because we're going to be seeing temperatures mid to upper 80s some low 90s as we go into Thursday with some humidity around here, but then and by the look, I can't got so excited about the weekend. I can't even spell. So anyway, um, we've got uh, another front moving on through here just in time for the weekend. It is going to be fantastic. A lot nicer than my spelling details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority.
Columbus Day holiday today, so not a lot of cars out there, right, RJ? No, not too much going on. We do have this ongoing construction, Mike, taking place right now there. I-35 northbound at Von Army. So this is past the Medina River, over up by uh, Medio Creek. So uh, a little bit of some issues there for our drivers on the southwest side if you're having to make your way into the city of San Antonio. See what this looks like on our maps. You can see that we're seeing now pretty good backup there. We saw that at least one lane was blocked there, the left-hand lane. And uh, just talked with Trans Guide a little while ago. They said that. Uh, uh, this is probably going to be an ongoing thing for uh, for a little while here. So uh, they mentioned maybe even through the morning. So if this is something that you need to kind of get through, just think about some alternate routes. Try and figure that out for you here in just a little bit. Taking a look at the rest of the city and inbound times. If for whatever reason you're having to go into work today, um, you know, you're one of a, like us. We're at work right now. Uh, you can see that we have uh, pretty good right now tra inbound times throughout the entire city. Really, again, uh, US 90 there, Castroville is kind of the biggest uh, or longest sort of driver commute. Oh, you know what? Don't forget about Lavernia there. Also a 40 minute commute there, but everything else looking pretty good as we take you back outside. Trans Guide again, northbound I-35 at Von Army southwest side. This is kind of the biggest thing that we're seeing right now. Ongoing construction causing a little bit of delay there for our drivers in the southwest side. Sarah, back to you. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, the crime scene tape has come down, but San Antonio police say a crime overnight is far from being solved. They're still trying to figure out who shot a man and why? Our Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Thousand Oaks near Henderson Pass. Now, Katrina, is there any update on this man's condition? Well, based on what we've been told, he's still in the same condition he was when he left here a few hours ago, uh, in critical condition. Now, officers found him here at this apartment complex. When they answered a call about the shooting around midnight, they say they found the man with a gunshot wound in his neck. The police spent some time searching this parking lot in the 2100 block of Thousand Oaks. They believe that's where he was shot, possibly during an argument. The man was rushed to a hospital by ambulance. The police have not been able to get a whole lot of information from him at this point. So again, they still don't know who shot him or why. They're trying to find answers to those questions and also find the person who shot him. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. In your morning headlines, the Israeli government has formally declared war and given the green light for significant military steps to retaliate against Hamas for its surprise attack over the weekend. More than 24 hours after Hamas launched an incursion out of Gaza, Israeli forces were still battling with militants holed up in several locations this morning. At least 1,100 people have reportedly been killed in Israel, including at least four American citizens. President Biden is deploying a U.S. aircraft aircraft carrier group to the eastern Mediterranean and rushing arms to the Israeli military in a bid to deter other actors from attacking. The area around a historic Maui town largely destroyed by wildfire two months ago is starting to come back, welcome back travelers. So the move this weekend comes as the mayor and Hawaii's governor push ahead to restart tourism in support of the economy despite vocal opposition from some of the residents. The website of five hotels in West Maui show they are accepting reservations again. Eight timeshare properties also are opening across region, the region early this month, including some a few miles from the devastation. The reopening falls on the two month anniversary of the wildfire that killed at least 98 people. There were no big winners in Saturday night's Powerball drawing. That means tonight's jackpot is worth $1.55 billion. That's the third largest in the game's history. During Saturday night's drawing, the Texas Lottery reports that one person, Uvalde, won the consolation prize of $1 million. Powerball says the chances of you winning the grand prize are 1 in 292 million. And it was matched all six numbers since July 19. Oh, the Dallas Cowboys get humbled by the 49ers in a 42 to 10 loss yesterday, hoping to prove themselves against a fellow NFC contender in a showdown against the 49ers. The Cowboys were run off the field almost from the start. The defense that had been rock solid the first four weeks was completely exposed. The offense took more than a quarter to gain even a single first down and couldn't move the ball or protect it. It added up to a big 42 to 10 loss to the 49ers. That makes it the most lopsided loss ever for Dallas in this storied rivalry. I know I could hear my neighbors across mm -hmm. the street 
who have the flag up, yeah. that they have the Dallas Cowboys flag up during the season. They, I could hear them shouting. Yep. I could hear my husband shouting. <laughs> yeah, not a good night for Cowboys fans. And the one that really stings, Dak Prescott with three interceptions last night against the Niners. All right, moving on, 540, 62 degrees. A uh, first of its kind for San Antonio. This first ever fentanyl awareness walk is happening soon. How next and how the event is bringing in people from all walks of life. Finally enjoying autumn around here. People are, are we're out and about this weekend enjoying the cooler, uh, less humid weather. 62 degrees out of San Antonio International Airport. This week is interesting weather-wise for a couple of different reasons, and Mike will talk more about that coming up in his forecast. Now to a new event that will make history in San Antonio. This Saturday will this be the city's first ever fentanyl awareness walk. We'll bring local, state, and federal leaders to our city to talk about the fentanyl crisis across our nation, including right here in South Texas. This comes as Governor Greg Abbott has officially declared October as Fentanyl Awareness Month in Texas. The event was formed by three angel moms or mothers who've lost children to fentanyl poisoning. We recently spoke to one of those moms who is on a mission to prevent other deaths. I so other mothers are not sitting here in front of a camera telling their story of their child. The Souls Walking for Souls event is this Saturday, 4 p.m. at the Green Line on Sydney Brooks Drive. It will be important speakers and Narcan training, food trucks, vendors, and a candlelight vigil to honor those lost to fentanyl. Our Courtney Friedman will be the MC of that event and so be sure to stop by. You can register online on the Souls Walking for Souls website. Well, as Congress returns this week, pressure is building on House Republicans. They are trying to find a replacement for the now ousted Speaker Kevin McCarthy. As CNN's Reed Binion reports, a vote could come as soon as this week. I really do hope that the House can come together. Senator Mark Wayne Mullen echoing the sentiment of many fellow Republicans as the GOP races to find a new House Speaker after Kevin McCarthy's historic ouster last week. House Majority Leader Steve Scalise of Louisiana and Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan are the two candidates vying to replace McCarthy. They're set to make their pitches to fellow Republicans at a closed party conference discussion Monday, followed by a candidate forum Tuesday and an internal election Wednesday. Jordan says at the forum he'll lay out his plan to address the government funding deadline, which falls on November 17th. It's not yet clear when the full House floor vote for Speaker will happen. That depends on whether moderate Republicans can rally around Scalise or Jordan, who are both from more conservative districts. The most influential person not voting has already made his preference clear. Former President Trump endorsing Jordan. The need to elect a new House Speaker growing even more urgent as the U.S. works to come to the aid of of Israel amid the unprecedented brutal attacks by Hamas. We need to make sure that they have all the resources and equipment necessary to defend themselves, to protect themselves, uh, and protect uh, the Israeli people. I'm Reed Binion reporting. 546, 61 degrees. Take a look outside with the roads with Transguide RJ Marquez in for Stephen Cavazos all week long, giving us updates on the roads. He'll let us know how things look when we come back. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio and things not going so good right now for our drivers on the southwest side looking at some ongoing construction there northbound lanes of 35 in Von Army so a little bit past the Medina River up towards Medio Creek uh, you can see that we have ongoing construction that's expected to last for a while there for our drivers there at least one lane there on the left hand side is blocked again the northbound lanes of I-35 at Von Army but rest of the city things looking pretty good out there as I move out of the way here move towards the desk we're going to take a look at some gas prices here real quick. So Monday, traditionally, the best time to uh, get gas, if you need to get gas, maybe you just want to go do it. Gas price is looking pretty good out there right now, guys. 305 here in Bear County, statewide 320. And uh, look at that compared to the national average, which is 370 right now. So this would be a good time. I've been, uh, I've been caught in a situation where I want to put gas mm -hmm. on a Monday morning. And I'm like, I could do it when I get off of work. And then next thing I know, the gas prices jump. <laughs> It's, it's, it's happened that quick. <laughs> yes, yeah. it'll happen that quick. Do you want to run now. out right now? <laughs> <laughs> I it. might. Roads look pretty good. I might. <laughs> you don't have another traffic hit for about 10 minutes. Go up the you street. I think I can make Come it. Yeah, the back. Valero. Yeah. The Valero yeah. or the quick trip. Yeah. <laughs> Well, a lot of, I'm sure folks were filling up could go on a drive this weekend just out to enjoy with the windows down and it was absolutely sensational. Another gorgeous sunset over there in St. Hedwig yesterday. Oh my 
gosh, it was just so nice this weekend with these temperatures that did yesterday dip down in the upper 50s, even upper 40s in parts of the hill country. Right now we've got a lot of clear skies, a couple of clouds hanging around here. 55 up there at uh, Bernie, 52 Kerrville, 62 at Randolph. Same thing out there at the airport and temperatures uh, will dip down maybe another couple of degrees this morning and then warm back up very quickly because we still have this low humidity throughout the morning hours and the drier air warms up a lot more easily and a lot more quickly than moist air does. So we're going to make it all the way up through the uh, 70s up to 77 today at noon and then top off at 83 degrees. We'll still be just a little bit below normal later on this afternoon. So here's satellite picture and there are a couple of clouds out there, more clouds down to the south. And again, we're watching this system off there in the Pacific Ocean, and this is throwing a lot of energy, a lot of clouds over here, maybe a couple of showers well down to the uh, south, although I'm sure a lot of those are evaporating before they reach the ground. But as that continues to work its way across Mexico, that then is going to bring with it the chance for some rain. So a couple of clouds around here, mixture of sunshine and clouds, if you will, uh, throughout the day today. Then they do thicken up overnight. Now, by tomorrow, yes, maybe a few showers in the morning hours, but the majority of this is then going to be developing later on as the day progresses, especially on into tomorrow evening. Notice how much of the hill country is going to be kind of missing out on this. The majority of this rain is going to be down to the south and east. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a couple of showers out there and this is going to be the case through Wednesday morning. Then that's going to start to uh, move on out. This is what we can thank for the beautiful weather. This huge low, this huge blob of cold air over the Great Lakes right now. This is what helped bring the front through the drier air. That's the situation today. Things then sort of modify a little bit as we go on into the middle portion of the week. The next big trough is developing there. And like last week, this is going to pump in a lot of hot air. It's going to be hot on Thursday. Then that moves on through. It's going to pull another front through here uh, for the weekend. Another great looking weekend. Then this sets up shop there next week. And it looks like this is actually going to be keeping us somewhat on the cooler side of normal through a good chunk then of next week which is fantastic news. 83 today, 75 tomorrow with the uh, cloud cover, some rain around there, and then those few showers around on Wednesday morning. Then we'll start to clear up. It's going to be hot Thursday, hot, humid Thursday. Front comes through, clears us out, gets rid of the humidity. 70s again this weekend, lows in the 50s. And again, perfect for the eclipse on uh, on Saturday morning. Excellent. Right now we're looking at uh, some clearer skies. So we may just luck out after all. Yep. Great. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Mike. 554, 61 degrees. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, three, seven, nine, fireball eight, daily four, one, two, one, one, fireball nine. Cash five, four, seven, 21, 22, 35. Lotto Texas 10, 14, 15, 20, 50, and 54. And Powerball is up to $1.55 billion. Those were the last numbers. And by the way, did you guys hear that somebody won Mega worth $361 million in San Angelo, Texas? San Angelo? On Friday night. It's back down to $20 million. Wow. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the story that everyone is following, the worst surprise attack on Israel in 50 years. The death toll is rising after Hamas bombarded the country with rockets and on-the-ground attacks. We've got team coverage across the region there in Israel and in Washington, where we'll have the latest on the casualties, the hostages, the response from the White House, and what could happen next. The Deputy National Security Advisor will join us live. Plus, we'll have more on the security measures being taken here at home. That and so much more on GMA. All right, we have a lot of folks off today for the holiday, but we still have traffic troubles. This is 35 in the Bon Army area. Uh, RJ is keeping tabs on this for us, and we'll be back. Starting this hour with a live look at the Western Wall in Jerusalem, Israel, right now keeping a close eye on the situation in Israel. That country declared war Sunday after a terrorist attack by Palestinian militant group Hamas over the weekend. Take a look outside with live cam. A beautiful 61 degrees at 6 o'clock this morning. And we have kind of a variety of things happening this week with the weather pattern. Mike will let us know about that in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is October 9th. Good morning. Did you get 
outside this weekend? Absolutely. How could you not, right? Did you grill? I did not grill, no, uh, but I did come downtown, uh, did some river walk walking on Saturday, and then spent some si time outside yesterday. How about you? Yes, I went on a walk yesterday. I went to um, they had the Monarch and Pollinator Festival in Brockenridge on Saturday, and Mike, I had packed my clothes for that, and I t-shirt and shorts, and I walked outside, I was like, oh, this is not the uniform anymore. <laughs> I need no. to add a sweater. Even Yeah, to even it. yesterday morning, I mean, we were down in the uh, mid and low 50s, upper 40s in the Hill Country. We were in, in burning all day Saturday, and oh my gosh, it was just so nice to sit there. And actually, in the shade, you're kind of like, hmm, I could have had like a little jacket going on here. So uh, this morning about the same situation, though, you might need if you're heading out early a little bit of a uh, sweatshirt, jacket, something like that. We've got a few clouds hanging around here. Sun's not going to be coming up for about another oh, hour and a half. 61. So we've dropped one more notch in town, mid to low 50s in parts of the hill country right now. And the humidity obviously is very, very low. This dry air that moved on in here and that's allowing temperatures to drop down along with the fact that we do have a lot of uh, mostly clear sky guys out there. Molds on the high side, ragweed, moderate, fall elm, pigweed are all low, and the updated count is going to be coming out to about 730 or so. So throughout the rest of today, temperatures are going to be warming up very quickly with this dry air that's in place, which doesn't take as much energy to heat that up. And of course, it then in turn doesn't hold the heat like moist air does. We're going to make it up to 77 today at noon and then top off at 83 later on today. So once again, just like the past couple of days, we are going to be below normal with high temperatures. Now we do have rain chances coming on in here. I know last week we were talking about rain chances with the front. No, that's been moved up whole different situation. So tomorrow we do have some rain chances and yes, there is another front that's going to be coming on through here. We got to heat up prior to it, but looking like another fantastic weekend in store details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, what's cooking, sir? All right, Mike. So some good news here for our drivers on the southwest side. It appears as if the cones there that were blocking the left-hand lanes of 35 North at Von Army have been cleared out. So you saw the convoy there kind of move in and out of the area. And you can see the traffic is moving along a little bit smoother there now on the northbound lanes there on the far southwest side. You can see it was causing pretty good traffic delay there because of this ongoing construction that was taking place. But uh, we'll continue to monitor this. If you're still kind of looking for a way around it, just keep in mind that Quintana Road actually runs kind of parallel to 35 northbound. So that might be a good way to go if you want to go ahead and exit 1604, head up to Quintana Road, that might be the way to go. But it looks, based on that transguide traffic shot, that traffic is about to clear out in that area. Taking a look at some inbound times here, and you can see that uh, traffic moving pretty good along the rest of the city. No other major incidents to report at the moment. Of course, we always have a pretty good, uh, pretty good traffic buildup there in uh, US 90 coming in from Castroville. But take a look at some of our cities up north, Bernie, Bulverde, New Braunfels, and Seguin traffic moving along pretty smooth if you are headed into the city of San Antonio right now. One more shot there, 35 in Von Army, and we'll go ahead and see if we can take a look at a couple extra cameras here. US, uh, you saw right there the quarry shot there, Sprucewood 281 traffic moving along pretty smooth across the rest of the city. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after a man was shot overnight. Happened just after midnight on Thousand Oaks near Henderson Pass. Investigators tell us the man was shot in a parking lot during an argument. He was taken to a hospital in critical condition. So far, police don't have any suspect information. However, police say they are talking with witnesses. Now to a live look at the Western Wall in Jerusalem, Israel this morning. And the big story we are following closely, Israel declared war after a terrorist attack by the Palestinian militant group Hamas over the weekend. The eyes of the world now looking to what will happen next. Here in the U.S., the Biden administration is staying in close touch with Israeli counterparts, and U.S. political leaders are pledging their support for Israel. CNN's Karen Kaifa is closely monitoring the situation and has the latest this morning. The attack unprecedented, the consequences devastating. Israel has made a formal declaration of war on Hamas, and Washington faces a new week with a new global crisis and no House speaker. After more than 48 hours of fighting, Israel's military says it has retaken control of all communities around Gaza. On the ground, Israeli troops work to secure the breach points where Hamas fighters cross the border. It's taking us more time as we expected to get things back into a sort of defensive security posture 
of people coming in and also defending uh, the communities. While from the air, Israel pounds Gaza with strikes it says are aimed at Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad targets. But scores of women and children have been killed, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. We are at war with Hamas. And sadly, there's going to, sadly there might be uh, people that are involved killed. It's not, it won't be intentional. And sadly, Hamas have entrenched themselves in a cynical way within the civilian population. Disturbing new videos from Hamas's attack on a music festival show the extent of the terror. Fighters shooting at a hostage at close range. A woman is led away. Her fate is unknown. Hamas claims it is holding more than 100 hostages. But this was a completely different attack that nobody was prepared for and nobody can ever be prepared for such a thing, I guess. The unprecedented attack shaking the international community. Two senior officials say the U.S. State and Defense Departments are moving as quickly as they can to deliver weapons to Israel as part of already existing contracts. President Biden's direction was to make sure that we're providing Israel everything it needs in this moment to deal with the uh, attacks from, uh, from Hamas. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Sunday that a U.S. carrier strike group was headed to the eastern Mediterranean Sea as a deterrence posture. Austin also said that the U.S. will rapidly provide Israel defense forces with additional equipment and resources. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. And back here at home, local Jewish leaders are inviting the community to stand with Israel during an event this evening. They say the past 48 hours have just been heartbreaking. Roughly 10,000 Jewish people live here in San Antonio. And the president of the Jewish Federation of San Antonio says the new war is Israel. Israel weighed hev heavily on the Jewish community. And it's, it's going to be a time for us to be able to pray together, to be able to, to pray for the loss of life that's taken place, to pray for the, the hopeful return of the hostages that were taken, um, and to pray for peace, because ultimately that's all we're really trying to achieve. The vigil will be at the Temple Bethel. It starts at 6 tonight. Happening today, Texas state lawmakers return to Austin once again for a third special session. This time they're focusing on school vouchers and the crisis at the southern border. Governor Greg Abbott has hinted for months that he would call this special session to get a law passed on school vouchers. It would basically allow parents to use taxpayer dollars to help put their children through private school. The vouchers are one of Abbott's top priorities in the regular session, but the plan never made it out of the House. Third special session agenda also revives a few proposals dealing with migrants down at our border. That includes increasing penalties for human smuggling and creating a state criminal offense for illegal entry from a different country. The third special session starts this afternoon at 1 o'clock. Well, tomorrow is the deadline to register to vote in Texas for the November 7th election. Even though it's not a presidential election year, there's still some very important things on the ballot. Right now on our website, we have everything you need to know to make sure you're ready. Early voting begins Monday, October 23rd. Now to California and the two police officers fired for playing a video game instead of responding to an emergency call. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. It's the video the LAPD took years to release. This patrol car recording of two officers playing the online game Pokemon Go instead of responding to a call about a robbery in progress at a Macy's in Crenshaw. On the recording, you hear the officers minutes after driving away discussing how to catch the Pokemon character Snorlax, ignoring the robbery call, even though, according to court documents, they were only 200 yards away from the store. He catches everything. I don't catch everything. But you're still pretty high up there for not catching everything. The officers were fired, but sued to get reinstated, their case going all the way to a California appeals court. The officers arguing their patrol car recordings should be dismissed because they were private conversations. But the appeals court disagreed and sided with the police board, which ruled the officers committed misconduct that was unprofessional and embarrassing and violated the trust of the public. The ignored robbery call was back in 2017, but the video just came to light thanks to a public records request. Derek Dennis, ABC News. 10 minutes past six, 61 degrees. Out of this world, inspiration after the break and astronauts inspiring message during Hispanic Heritage Month. Outside with live cam, if you can't peek outside right now, as a matter of fact, go outside and have some coffee. Come back in 
after the commercial break. It's 61 degrees here in town. That's a lovely fall day for sure. A lot of folks are off today, but thanks for tuning in. Anyway, you're watching GMSA.